Today we're going to be thinking about the question of forgiveness. Refreshed prayer is a prayer that really gets to the root of the issues that really matter in our lives. And so when our Lord then says in his next phrase in this prayer, forgive us our debts or our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. He's really getting to an issue that he sees is absolutely core and fundamental to our very being. Matthew says, if you refuse to forgive other people, your father will not forgive you. So I want us to think about this question today. How do we know we have forgiven others? I don't think it's necessarily just words, because we don't want teeth out forgiveness, do we? It might be easy enough to say it in private or even to express it in private, and even where it were appropriate to say it in person. But the scripture te teaches about forgiving from the heart. And we need to remember what happens when we don't forgive in that way. Bitterness then develops in our lives. It's a little bit like one of those rooms, you know, that the windows have been closed in. There's no air getting in. And the dampness inside starts to develop a mould in all sorts of places, in the corners of the rooms and around the skirting boards. And it's just, oh, it's disgusting. That's what your life and my life is like when forgiveness is not being a practical thing practised day upon day. Because when you open the window and let the air in, that's what forgiveness from the heart is like. You're like letting in the freshness so that our relationships are everything so much better. And I'm sure that there are lives, all of our lives, are subject to this whole question of forgiveness because we sin against each other all the time. We do it in thought and word. We do it when we don't do things, when we break our promises or in all sorts of ways. We sin intentionally and unintentionally, but we still cause pain to one another. And the reason I focus on our forgiving is because I know that there's, and when I say our forgiving, I mean us rather than God's forgiving, is because I know that there's no question about his forgiveness. So when we say forgive us our sins, I mean, that is written in the blood of Jesus which washes the deepest stains away. Every stain is washed away and it returns us like a brand new person before him. So there's no question about that. We don't need to debate too much on that, I think, today. So it is this question of us forgiving others that is the one with the weight. It's not even a matter of forgiving ourselves either, which in my view is a bit nonsensical. What we really mean should be our ability to receive God's forgiveness humbly, meekly and gladly. I think that's what we need to do, not forgiving ourselves. Receiving the forgiveness of God and then being thankful. But forgiveness is really brother and sister to confession, restoration, restitution, repentance, isn't it? They all live in the same household and they all need each other and they all interrelate. And that is a big question in itself, more so than for this short thought this morning. So then this question of forgiveness of sin of those against us, how do we do it? Well, Ephesians 4.32 says this, Be kind and compassionate, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Joan and I chose that as the verse for our wedding to put on our order of service for our wedding and also because we thought that that really is a marvellous verse for a, for a marriage because a marriage is a place where we have so many endless opportunities to demonstrate forgiveness. It's that one relationship where we are in such close contact that we can step on each other's toes, metaphorically speaking, and also that if we're not at peace in that place, it's a bit close to be not at peace. It's a bit long for it not to be happy. So we really need to learn to forgive and what that means. So these two words then, kindness and compassion, are really crucial. So if we're thinking of what forgiveness from the heart looks like, they are helpful words in order to help us get a handle on this. These are not just words that describe the act of forgiving, but I think they are the very mechanism 
to demonstrate it. Think about these words. Be kind and be compassionate. They're the sort of words that you can't just, you can't be a kind person without doing a kind thing. It's impossible. Because kindness is an active word and compassion is is a is an emotion, is a deep heart experience that cannot contain itself. It has to come out. It has to overflow in some way. It just has to find some expression. So when we do acts of kindness and compassion, I think that's when we're really forgiving from our hearts. These are the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives, enabling us to do what he would want us to do. I remember reading about Corrie ten Boom, and I think maybe we mentioned this back last year when we were reading the book of her life, that when she was going around speaking in various churches after the war, talking essentially about forgiveness, because that was what she said was one of the greatest needs after the war. She said she had spoken in this large church to a large, responsive and receptive congregation in Germany. And this man was coming down the aisle to greet her as everyone else was at the door, and she recognised him as one of the cruel guards in the prison camp, the concentration camp that she and her sister had been in. And she just discovered, rising up from within her heart, all this terrible hatred and anger, as I think any of us would understand. We can fully appreciate it. It had got to be so difficult especially when her sister was killed or died as a result of the, the treatment. And so when this guard arrived opposite her, he then thanked her so much for her message and said how much it had meant to him. A man who deeply needed to hear those words, who had been so cruel and so much a part of this great machine of death, and, and so he was delighted to hear this. This was like water and refreshing water. Now, whether he re- she recognised her, she doubts if he did. But he knew, having listened to her, that she was one of those people who had been in a concentration camp, just like the people he had been in charge of. And so it must have been like ministry to him. Corey says, I really couldn't, I just couldn't get my hand, because he put his hand out to shake hands. And she says, I really struggled, I really struggled to get my hand out. And inwardly praying that God would help her, she said, I finally got my hand to move physically the little small distance it took to reach out and take his. And when I shook his hand, it was as if there was electricity went up my arm. Something happened in her being, she said. The release of that great hatred, the willingness to express kindness and compassion to someone who needed to know forgiveness. I'm not going to say, I'm not saying that that's going to happen to you or I that experience, but I really do believe the release will happen. And I wonder if there is anyone that you've got this issue of feeling bitterness towards whom you need to act in kindness and compassion. And there is a real dilemma because sometimes these are situations that are are historical. The person's no longer there. But the thought came to me as I was thinking about this. It was 2 Samuel 9, 1, and I knew there was a passage there that about David, and it says, he speaks of this in this way. He says, Is there anyone of the house of Saul that I could show kindness to for Jonathan's sake? Now, I know that, Saul, that David is trying to show kindness to someone who showed kindness to him, but nonetheless, he was of the household of Saul. And this was a painful memory for David because Saul had been such a miserable person in the way he treated him. There was someone and his name was Mephibosheth. He had a, a foot disability, he had a disability. David brought him into his house, cared for him, fed him. And I think there is something here, surely, is there not, of the grace of God in liberating, building relationships. So I think when we are praying this prayer, Lord, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Let's use these thoughts to pray into that today. And every time we pray it, if we mean it, I think it will move us out to seek to find ways to show kindness and compassion to the people around us. And it may mean a letter, it may mean a card, it may mean something to someone else because that person's no longer here. There are lots of ways the Holy Spirit will guide you and I to show kindness. 
and compassion today.